Hi. So if you guys can see me on YouTube, do you mind to just let me know? Hey, Cynthia. Um, and if you guys can see me on Facebook, let me know that too, if you don't mind. I am uh, actually, I know I can do this on one streaming thing, but I didn't get it set up in time. So we're just going to try to do both. Okay, great. Thank you, Kathy. I appreciate that. Let me see if these folks on uh, Facebook can see. Let's see how we go. Okay, great. So if you guys, um, let me see if I can see who, where the comments are on Facebook. My nose is itching, sorry. <laughs> All right. Get down to where I can see the comments. Okay. Hey, Linda. Hey, Linda, I know you're on Facebook. Can you see me on Facebook? Next week, I'll have all this pulled together. Okay, great. All right. So we're live on Facebook and YouTube with two different laptops. That's awesome, right? <laughs> and no cat. I've locked out the cat and I've locked out the other people in the house. So it's just me. And I'll try to keep up with all the comments. But first of all, let me just thank you guys for joining the video tonight. And, you know, for all the love you've shown, the, the little sampler that we made, it's really fantastic. It's been fun to watch everybody download it and watch what you've chosen to use to stitch it. So it's super exciting. And I hope that you enjoy it. It really is kind of leading up to something that we're going to do at the end of the month. Um, so anyway, I, I'm, I'm dying to tell, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I, I hope I'm not going to. <laughs> that way. Um, so I wanted to start out and kind of, um, you know, talk to you a little bit about the chart and just make sure I kind of cover any questions. And if you've got questions, you know, feel free to post them. I will um, try to keep up with the comments and answer them, which means I might look kind of funny. Uh, I'm glad you can hear me, too. That's great. Thank you, Rita. If you guys do have trouble hearing me, let me know. I'll try to fix that, too. Gosh, we've got a lot of neat people on here from cold places. <laughs> so It's a little bit cold here, too. So Pittsburgh and Canada and Michigan and Arizona, where I hope it's warm down there, Cindy, at least down there. Um, but... Yeah, thank you. It's it's just been really heartwarming to see all the response to it. Um, so first of all, I'll tell you a little bit about it. It it is you know we made up the squirrel. He looks like a Bristol squirrel, but he's not exactly a Bristol squirrel. And the biggest difference is in his tail. And so his tail kind of curls around, which we liked a lot. And probably the way he holds his little acorn. Um, so he's a neat squirrel. I hope you like him. Um, and then the alphabet underneath that, everything else is adapted from a Bristol. And so, um, you know, I hope you enjoy it. We put things in there that we wanted you to use. And so we want you to, and we actually designed it. I'll show you the chart. We designed it so that you have the space at the end of each of the different kind of things. So the different alphabets so that you can take and put initials of people that are important to you. So, for example, you, you can use your family or you can use your stitching friends. Um, some of the antiques have that, which is neat. So the little girls would often use um, the bed numbers of their friends um, from the orphanage or their initials. And so I would love it if you used initials at the end of each of these. And so I would suggest that if you're going to do initials, you use this block initial here for your friends or whatever. And you can do it at the end of each of the, uh, each of the little sections. So, you know, you've got some here and here and here. Um, now with the bands, you know, put as many of the designs in there as you can fit on whatever banding or piece of fabric that you're using. So you don't have to just stitch as many as we stitch. They're repeating. 
So you can just, you know, add another one in there and make it work or use less, you know, either way. And then when you get down to the name, um, Allie and I were talking about it after we put the whole thing together. And she was like, you don't think they'll put my name on there, do you? And I laughed and I said, no. <laughs> but then I thought, well, you know, they might if they don't know that it's an adaptation and not an antique. So um, put your name here. And so we gave you two cursive alphabets. We gave you a capital letter cursive alphabet and we gave you a small um, letter cursive alphabet. And so put your name in there. And really the only things that you have to center on this, because you can do this to any width of any linen or ADA or banding that you have. You can use something from your stash or you can use banding. Um, or the squirrel and your name. And so um, the squirrel, you can see the arrow right here where the center is on the squirrel. And then for your name, you'll just find the center, count the stitches and center it in there however you want it. Now, I'm going to do a lot of talking tonight instead of stitching with you because I know some of you don't have your supplies yet. And I didn't want you to feel bad. <laughs> and so I will show you what I've stitched. I got mine started. I can't believe some people have already got a whole squirrel stitch. So that's fantastic. Um, and I do have my body of my squirrel, but not his tail um, stitched. And I'll show you what I'm stitching on. Um, so that's kind of, you know, and we, we did put February 2022. So, you know, that's kind of how long we wanted it to run. It's not very big. And so I hope that you'll all have a chance to finish it. Now, I will say this. If you know people that want to stitch it, but they're not going to get to it this month, make sure they go out there and download it. Because at the end of the month, we're going to remove it. And we're going to do that for a couple of reasons. One of them will become evident at the end of the month. And the other one is because we'll probably print it up um, in a, in a, like a fold out thing and just put it in the shop since, uh, we're looking for fun things to do when we open. Um, but it's free. It's out there through the 28th. Um, and on March 1st, we're probably going to pull it down. So if you've got friends that want to download it, let them go ahead and do it. And, um, I hope that you guys aren't having too much trouble. It doesn't look like it. There's a whole lot of downloads going on. I've seen, I've got questions from one or two people, um, about checking out with it and stuff. So, Hopefully all that stuff is going well. I'm just trying to keep up with the uh, comments and stuff. Oh, Cindy, not warm. 39. That is not warm. <laughs> that is not warm for Mesa. Wow. That's not even warm for here. <laughs> so I feel for you. Good time to stay inside and stitch. Um, so that's kind of it on the little band sampler in terms of how it should go. You can stitch it on anything. And if you're stitching it on something where you've got more room, then, you know, by all means, just keep stitching your alphabets across there and whatever room you have left on whatever row you finish, use that to fill in. It doesn't have to be any particular length as long as you've got enough fabric, you know, to get it started. Um, if you have something more narrow, the same thing is true. You know, stitch and then just keep going um, until you get at a stopping point. You know, it's it'll be fine. Just make sure, again, that you've got enough fabric for it. If you don't, if you get in a pinch, you can always live out an alphabet or something. Or honestly, I can't imagine that anybody would feel this way. But if you hate squirrels, you can leave off the squirrel at the top. <laughs> it's okay. I know people that don't like squirrels. It'll be okay. Um, so we named it Red February for obvious reasons. So that you could uh, have something red to stitch in February. So let's talk a little bit about, um, I've got a little bit of notes here. Let's talk a little bit about the fabric, you know, and the material and, you know, what, what, if you're stitching on something wider or not so wide, I'll show you mine just so you can see it. So I use this uh, banding with three stripes on it and there is some more of this on the website, unless it's sold out this afternoon, I'll put some more out there. And I know that um, banding has been, you know, selling out and I've added more. I think I've added everything I've got at this point, except for, some of the more narrow stuff. Um, and so I'll show you like this one. Somebody bought this, which I thought was a fabulous idea. It's the four inch, um, but they're going to stitch it on this ever one. So let me go ahead and talk about that. If you wanted to stitch on the more narrow banding, which we sold a whole lot of this, and you want to stitch it over one, I gave you a yard, or you might have some of your own. That's plenty. You really don't need a yard to stitch it over one. 
You could stitch it over two on this. It's a 27 slash 28 count. It depends on the loom that it gets woven on. Um, I think it's listed as a 27 count, but sometimes it's 28. So if you want to stitch it over two, just, you know, stitch it over two. I think you'd have enough room on this, but you might want to count and just be sure. Um, I'll try to do that for you tonight or tomorrow and just be sure that it'll fit on here on a yard. If you've got more than a yard, I'm sure it will fit. Um, 24 inches of this gave you four inches of space, uh, a little bit more than four, almost five. So you've got a little room on the top and a little room on the bottom. I really expected that if you're stitching it on banding, most people would need a little more room on the top and a little less room on the bottom. Because what you'll do is you'll put it over something or you'll wrap it around a spool. Um, and the bottom, you'll probably just hem stitch. And, you know, you, you just won't need as much room down there. If you're going to wrap it around a spool, I would suggest that you attach a piece of wool or another piece of fabric to the top so that you're not wasting all that banding and wrap that part around the body of the spool um, and then just tack it down because uh, you're not really, if you pick a color like a red or, you know, something that you like, it's going to be fine. And that way you're not wasting your banding just to wrap it around the spool. Um, I hope that helps. And um, I will show you a couple of different stitches that you can do to end this off. Or if you're stitching on a fabric like an Ada or a linen that you can hem it with. So there's, um, you know, you can use a nun stitch. You can use a four-sided stitch. You can use a hem stitch. All of those things are great ways to finish off the edging of your fabric. And some of you already know all those things. Um, I've done all of them. I always have trouble starting a hem stitch. <laughs> and it doesn't matter how many times I've done it. I always have trouble getting it started. And then once I get it started, it goes just fine. But, you know, I'll post some information for you. I'll just put that on our um, website on the entry page, the home page of the website, which, by the way, is called New and News. That's the first page. It's the page you come up to. And you can just click on that and see it. Or you can, you know, Google it, look for it on YouTube, and you'll see lots of different um, ways to do it. Oh, Linda, you switched over to YouTube. Facebook got blurry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you're on Facebook and it got blurry. Um, I will try to figure this out for next week and get everybody on YouTube where you just have a link over to YouTube, probably. Um, that might be the easiest thing to do. And next week, I do have a slideshow that I want to show you. So I've been really lucky and had the chance to go to the um, Bristol orphanages and see their exhibit. Um, twice. I went with Susan Greening Davis both times and she's done some trips over there. And um, Claudia Dutcher, who you know is our expert on Bristol samplers, was, was with us, I think, on both of those trips. Um, and so it was a great chance to learn a lot of things and see a lot of things. And I do have some great pictures and information. And I want to share that with you. I was looking back at them um, earlier in the week and just some really neat stuff. So um, one of the gentlemen that was there that helped us a lot, he's passed away now. And so that kind of made it even that much more special because he was a great resource and he's gone. But there are some pictures of some beautiful Bristols um, in there, too. So, And one of them is M.H. Smith. And so, you know, if you're looking for something else that you want to stitch that's a Bristol, Claudia charted this from um, their collection, M.H. Smith, and it's got a beautiful squirrel on it. So this is another nice big bristle that you can stitch. Um, there's a number of them. Claudia also charted this bristle red. So it's a neat one. Now this one has a companion called bristle green and it's in green. So it's a really pretty one. And this is a small one. Um, so those are two of my favorites. And if you want information on bristles, you know, Claudia is the expert. You know, she she's invested a whole lot of time and a whole lot of energy um, to really make herself knowledgeable. And she has a vast collection. Now, um, I owned for a while Harriet Salt, uh, which is a really big, beautiful Bristol. And uh, it was reproduced by somebody else. And I actually then sold that to Claudia. So now Claudia owns Harriet Salt. So that one's in her collection, which is really nice. And, you know, we've seen a few others come up. And if you watched Fiber Talk a couple of weeks ago, um, Shelly Myland has a really beautiful Bristol that's getting charted. So that's exciting, too. 
Um, so I keep looking for questions here. If there's any questions. Yeah. Bristol, Susan, you stitched Bristol red. That's great. It is fun. Um, okay. So again, if you want to stitch on this more narrow banding or any other narrow banding will also work. You can stitch it over one or you can probably stitch it over two. Just check and make sure you've got enough banding for that. Um, but for sure and certain you can stitch it over one. This lining is so easy to stitch on that I think it's okay to stitch over one. Even I would stitch over one on this. And, you know, a lot of you have done the eye stitch sampler, so you haven't had any trouble with that. Okay. With, with this stitching over two, I'm using two strands. Um, so if you're stitching over two, this is what it'll look like with two strands. Just, you know, kind of chunky, which is what I wanted. Um, if you want it to look more delicate, then use one. So that's that. I wanted to also show you some of these other bandings that I put up there. So this one's really pretty. This is one that we use for Hannah Longstreth, um, but it's just like the red, only it's a cream. And it's a really beautiful. And this one also has enough space for you to stitch over to you. There weren't a lot of these out there, but I posted everything I had. So I think there were like, you know, six of those. This is the one that a lot of you ordered if you ordered from us in the last couple of days. Um, there are actually two colors of this. There's this one more maroon and there's this one that's a little bit brighter. Um, either one's going to work. And we really didn't differentiate when we sent them out because we actually had, there were almost all this one and just a little bit of this one. Um, the, the silks look good with both. And so we suggested a couple different silks if you were going to stitch in silk. We suggested... NPI 503 and NPI 504. Um, and I want to show you those. So this is 503. And it looks like it might be a little bright, a little dark for this one that's brighter, but it actually, once you pull it off the skein and start to stitch with it, it looks fine. Um, you know, it certainly goes okay with this one. And then this was one of the other bands. It's the one like mine. So you definitely can use it there. But I really, I think that if you, once you start to stitch with it, even on this one, that's a little bit brighter. I think you'll be okay with it. Um, the other one is 504. And so I really like 504 and it's the same. It's a little bit brighter. Um, and so if you, once you strand it down, it looks fine with this and it goes with all the others too. I uh, saw my friend Melanie stitching with, um, linen thread which i thought was pretty neat so i'm excited to see how hers turned out and i've seen a number of people stitching with dmc now i wanted to show you this dmc this is dmc number 115 and it's it's um you can see it's i wouldn't say it's really i guess it's variegated it's just not over dyed and so it does change colors now i've stitched some small bristle stuff with this um on the trip i went on claudia gave us a name tag and she gave us this thread and we stitched it with this and it was beautiful. So if you've got 115 DMC, it's also really beautiful. It doesn't look, the color changes is not as harsh as it looks in the skein, which is true for a lot of things. So um, if you've got this one, this is a fabulous one to use. It'll make it look antique. Um, I saw somebody else using 75 and I think that maybe is a retired number, but if you've got it, you know, use it. I think that'd be great. Um, so you've got the skeins. You need two skeins to stitch this skeins. Um, a lot of you ordered hanks because we had them. And who doesn't want a hank of a red silk? That's not a bad idea. So if you ordered a hank, that might turn out to be a really good thing. Because if you want to stitch another bristle with it, um, you'll have it. And so there's 45 meters of silk on this hank. NPI is an eight ply silk. So the thread itself is a strand and each little thread inside of that is technically a ply. So it's an eight ply silk. So you've got a lot of silk in a hank. Um, and depending on, you know, the size of the bristle that you might want to stitch or whatever you're stitching that's red, uh, you know, you'll have plenty to do it. I do think that 503 and 504 are the most beautiful reds in the NPI collection. Uh, and it, it is called the Chinese um, red range. And they're both called that. So, yeah, even though you won't need it all for this, you might want it later. <laughs> a 
wink, wink. And um, you might you might just find something red that you want to stitch with it. So you can't go wrong with that. Um, I and there's another one, 502. It's very bright, fire engine bright. And I don't love it, <laughs> but you might. And if you want to go that bright, you know, jump up to 502. Uh, that's, you know, I don't love it. And if you're using a different, like an overdyed, somebody was using, um, oh, oh, it always makes me think of Dorothy. What is it called? It's a classic color works. Oh, anyway, you guys know what it is, but uh, I'll look in the comments. Maybe somebody tell me. Yep. 75 is retired. Somebody says, okay. Um, and somebody's using 115 for pandemic. That's great. It's good, good, good color for that. Ruby slippers. That's it, Patty. Thank you. Thank you. I knew somebody would tell me. So um, Ruby slippers is beautiful. It's a beautiful red. And if you've got some Belle Swa silk, um, you know, they've got some really pretty reds. Like Tulip is really pretty. There's some pretty ones in there. Thank you, Cindy. Yeah, you got it too. Um, Melanie can't wait to try the, the linen thread. I was so excited, Melanie, when I saw you ordered that. I think it's great. Um, so I wanted to sacrifice a Hank. And again, I'll tell you guys if you join late, I am um, really just talking through the some of the things I thought you might need to know or might want to know or might want to hear tonight. Next week, I've got a little slideshow I'm going to show you. Um, and hopefully I'll get to stitch with you. I didn't want to stitch tonight because I knew a lot of you don't have your stuff yet because I've been mailing it like crazy the last couple of days. So thank you for all the orders too. I appreciate that. Um, but I wanted to sacrifice a Hank. And I wanted to do it because I... I've used Hanks before. I'm using one to stitch um, a modern folk embroidery from Jacob de Graff. And I will tell you that Jacob de Graff has a Bristol inspired um, sampler that he produced. I want to say two years ago, because we were still in the shop. I think it's called the Bristol monkey and it's so cute. And I really want to stitch it. And of course I bought it from him and, and it has a charity contribution um, tied to it, but I haven't stitched it. That's another really good one. Um, because it has the monkey on it. So um, I wanted to show you what I did. So first I'll show you what I did that I don't like. I um, undid my hank and it's a lot of thread and I ended up with this much. I put it on two different thread loops. <clears throat> what I don't love about it is that the way that I cut it and I cut it all, I came out with a strand about this long which I'm going to say is, um, let me just measure it. So I'm not guessing. I would say 18 inches, but let me check it out and see. Yeah, it's 19 inches. For me, that's a little short um, for needlepoint ink. Now, if you're using a more delicate silk, 18 inches is, is fine. And this one's 19. Um but the needlepoint ink is is really a nice sturdy silk. And so for me, I could have went to 24. And 24 is my go-to. I really like 24-inch lengths. So I don't like the way I cut mine. But I've got this much of it cut, and I will be using it. So that's fine. So I wanted to tell you that. And I want to show you what it looks like to undo a hang. So you just slide this off. Okay. And it's twisted. You see how it's twisted? Um, I'm trying to show to both screens. So you untwist it. It's kind of tucked in itself right here. And it just pulls apart like that. And so now you've got two ends here. It's like a hank of yarn. So if you've done any knitting. So you kind of find the loop and you put your finger in there. And then you pull it out like this. And so now you have this loop. Now, if you look at it, you'll see that somewhere on here, it's got a tie on it. Like that. Can you guys see that? So that is your, you know, obvious place to cut. And so I usually, you can undo this tie. And then you have this huge thing of silk that, trust me, will get unwily extremely quickly. So if you're not doing needlepoint or something where you need, or, you know, something where you need a really long uh, strand or ply, I would not leave this whole thing together like this. I would cut it at least here. So I would cut it right here. Let me see which one I actually had. 
which one I was stitching with. I hope I got the other one. I think I did. <laughs> I don't want to have two of the same color, although I could use it. Because um, I'm going to cut it, and we're going to talk about it. Um, I said I would. Found my scissors. Okay. So you can cut this little piece right here, or you can untie it. It will untie. It's too wrinkly to use, though. So even if you untie it, you're going to have to cut that off because it just comes off of a strand and you don't want to stitch with that. It's too, you know, too wrinkled up. Um, so I don't think I got mine cut all the way. Okay. So now I'm left with that. And right there's those two cut pieces and you see how that's all twisty. You don't want to stitch with that. Um, now for me, I would cut right through it right here like that okay this is long this is a yard close to a yard it's probably more like a meter um but this is too long for us to stitch with you should not stitch with it that long um and so this is where it brings you to if you cut it here you get to 18 inches so you know if you're going to cut it here you're either going to have to stitch with a long strand or you're going to have to cut it here and stitch with your 18, 19, 20 inches. And that's kind of what you come down to. The other option is not to cut it. And then you're going to have to wind it on something. And so you'll, you'll clip it where I clipped it at first, where you get this little straggly part. And then you have to keep your hand in there and carefully undo it and wind it on something, which is just too much for me. So I normally cut mine here <clears throat> and I keep this big thing. And then I pull a strand off here. Now, I will tell you that I've been stitching with this length for the Sal with Modern Folk Embroidery for this year, and I've not had any trouble because it's needle point ink. Um, I love a Verisois. It's very beautiful, too. I don't think I could stitch with a strand that long with a Verisois. And I'm not really telling you to stitch with a strand this long. I'm just pointing out that you've got a couple choices here. You can cut this thing in the middle and have an 18, 19 inch. I guess it's really more like 19 or 20 because uh, a meter is about 40 inches. It's a little bit shy of 40 inches. So it's a 19 inch length, which is not too bad. Um, or you can stitch with this, which is pretty close to a meter, 39 point something inches. Um, those are your choices. You can do it either way. Like I said, I've got one hank of this that I'm using like this. I'm not having any trouble at all. And I've got these guys that I cut down to the 19 inch length and it feels a little short to me. So, you know, I leave that with you to decide what you want to do. But undoing the hank is not a big deal. If you're going to unwind it entirely from that one strand where you cut and wind it onto something, put aside some time <laughs> and keep your hand in there so you don't get a knot. So that's all I'm going to tell you about that. Um, good luck with that. I hope you can, uh, figure that out. Can you wind the hank into a ball? That's a good question, Donna. I guess you can. I mean, this is a nice, sturdy, durable silk. And if you can do that without getting it knotted up, that's probably a great thing to do. Or you can wind it onto a spool. Um, and I've got some spools upstairs. You could easily wind it onto a spool. I think that would be better than, um, a bobbin because a bobbin you're going to get it's going to take forever. It'll be huge. You'll get so much kinking in it, which the kink comes out with your hands, with the warmth of your hands, but a spool might not be a bad thing. So you can wind it on a spool and then spools are cool because then you can put your scissors in the top of it and use it for, you know, a little scissor wrist, or you can glue a magnet on the top and um, use it for a needle wrist. So I do stitch with two strands on this banding because I'm stitching over two. So it's a 27, 28 count. Um, and stitching over to you, I stitch with two strands, um, Susan, I had to find your comment again. If I were stitching over one thread of the linen, I would stitch with one strand. Um, and if I were stitching on a linen that was a 36 count or 40 count, which some of you are, I would use one strand. 36, some people use two. Um, and it just depends on the linen, how tight the weave of the linen is. Um, and Judy's telling me you can put it on an umbrella swift and use a ball winder to wind it up. 
So that's a knitting thing, which I don't knit, but I know that's a knitting thing. So she's telling us that we can. Um, so, yes, yeah, so you could wind it into a ball. Thanks, Judy, for that. Um, so it depends on what you're stitching on, how many strands you use. For the banding, I use two because I'm stitching over two threads. And, again, I'll show it to you again. It's kind of, it's got a, a, a nice substantial look to it, which I love. You know, he's a chunky look. He's a chunky, not a chunky monkey, but a chunky squirrel. Um, so, you know, if you're stitching on Ada, you can stitch with two strands on 14 count and 16 count. When you get to 18 count, depending on the Ada and whether or not it's over dyed and it's a tighter Ada or if it's a loose Ada, if it's a tight Ada, probably go to one strand. If it's a loose weave, like it's not been dyed or anything, then you probably would stick with two. And really, it comes down to what you like the look of. That's how many strands you stick with. Um, so let me see if there's any other comments. Use a Navarro Swan 936 on the band with more burgundy edging. That's going to be really pretty, Cindy. So, yeah, I like that. Um, oh, Linda's telling me there's something funky going on with YouTube. Well, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'll have to uh, try to figure that out. So if you guys, you know, send me a note or something afterwards if you had trouble with the feed, and I'll try to figure it out. I had done this before, but it's been um, with YouTube Live. We did it during the soiree, and we, we did fine. We didn't have any trouble, but I had another software layered on top of it, and I didn't do that tonight. Um, I'll do that for next time So because I need to show some slides and stuff, and I have to have that for next time. So... Hopefully it goes okay, um, but if not, then, you know, I, I apologize and I will try to make it better next time. So, are there any other questions about, you know, threads or banding or linen? I wanted to show you a couple other bandings. This one I posted yesterday, and I don't know that we sold a lot of it yet, but it's really pretty. I called it sand, but you see it's a little bit darker than sand. It's another one that's great. Now, this one, because it doesn't have an edging on it, you'll have more space to stitch here. So, <clears throat> you know, I still put a 24-inch length, but you'll end up with some extra room. But this is another really pretty option, as you can see. This is more traditional look for the Bristols. They came out on kind of a parchment-colored linen, and over time it got a little bit lighter, uh, or maybe it got darker over time. I don't know. Maybe it was really white. I doubt it. But it leans a little bit more this way to a little bit lighter, more wider. Um, so this might be a little bit more traditional look, but, you know, this is an adaptation and it doesn't have to be um, spot on perfect for that. Let me see. I think I have showed you now all of the banding that I had pulled aside for that. Um, Just looking at my notes here. Oh, so let me tell you a little bit about what I was getting at with the giveaway for the sampler. So, oh, thanks for letting me know that, Jan. I'm glad your YouTube is good. Um, so, Susan, you said, thanks. So, if you use two strands, what length should you cut? I like 24-inch length, but if you're using a hank, I'd cut it to the 19-inch, to be honest. Um, or you might use the whole 40 inch length. Um, but if you're cutting a DMC or something like that, honestly, I take it right here and I pull it to right here and I cut it. And for me, that's, it's over 24 inches, but it's way less than a yard. So cut it with what you're comfortable with. And it really depends on what you're stitching with. If you're stitching with something delicate, you have to use a shorter strand. Um, because by the time you get to the end of it, it just looks kind of crummy. And so while I don't love the fact that, you know, I'm stitching with a 20 inch strand here, they look good. Every one I've done looks, looks good. So, um, so that's, that's kind of that. Um, okay. So what I was getting to with the giveaway, I'm going to do some giveaways with this stuff too. So on these, you know, on these videos, if you, uh, if you've, you know, give me a little comment and let me know you're here. I'll put it that way. So say, hey, say red, say squirrel, say whatever you want to. But give a little comment either on YouTube or on Facebook and let me know you're here. And I will do a selection and I will give away 
um, for each of those platforms, I'll give away one of the new samplers that we're going to issue at the end of the month. Um, I've got some other neat things that I'm probably going to throw in there. We did the first Bristol workshop with Claudia, uh, one of the early ones. I, I, she's probably done other ones, but we did ours in 2019 in October, and we made these cool little chapsticks for it. And we used Claudia's Bristol Squirrel from M.H. Smith. I've got maybe 20 of these left. So I'm probably going to throw those into, you know, whoever wins. And then we also, um, for that and for the year of 2020, our, um, our project labels and our needle magnets were the Bristol Squirrel. And so we've got those left. So I'll probably throw one of those in for the winners to see. So you've got something extra and fun. Um, <clears throat> let's see. So the giveaway that we're going to do at the end of the month, I will, you need to post a progress picture and it doesn't have to be done. Um, but show me that you really mean to stitch it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, it doesn't, doesn't have to be like half done or all the way done. If it's all the way done, I'm going to be, I'm going to be happy. Um, you know, but show me something that tells me, yeah, they're really going to stitch it. Um, because if you don't want to stitch this one, you probably, you might not want the one I'm giving away. Um, but if you love this one, you might love that one. And so it's kind of goes hand in hand. So I will pick, um, some winners from postings of pictures at the end of the month. Once, you know, we get ready to release and on the, on the 28th, we'll do a live video and I'll premiere that sampler. And um, for the people who've posted progress pictures, you've got a chance to win some kits and you've got a chance to win some charts. Um, so we're super excited about that. And you will be the first to see what that sampler is, which will be fun. Um, so just trying to make it fun. And then the charity side of that, um, if you know anything about George Mueller, and you will if you come back next week and the week after that, um, because I'll teach you a little bit about it if you don't already. And you might already know a lot about him, but he's a really interesting person. But one of the things that he's well known for is his strong belief that God would provide. And there are lots of accounts of him, you know, sitting down at the table with all these children that he's decided to take care of. And at that time, it was really important because there weren't other places for these kids to go. Oh, thanks, Ron. I'm glad you like it. There weren't other places for these kids to go at that time. Orphanages, um, if there were, I mean, I, I think most kids ended up having to go to the workhouse, which was just not a good situation. It was a place where kids went and they really, really worked hard all day, long days, long, long days. There were no protection laws to protect kids and they were really... Um, just there to get as much work done as they could. And they got a little tiny bit of school and they really, a lot of them died in there and they never came out. And so for George to Mr. Mueller to put together these orphanages was really incredible. And um, he, the accounts were that he would sit at the table on more than one occasion and there wouldn't be enough food to feed all these kids. And he would say, you know what? God will provide and they would have the blessing or something like that. And miraculously, truly miraculously, um, the milkman would knock at the door or the bread guy would knock at the door and there was extra food that they brought over to donate. And so, you know, a lot of neat stories. And so that's what prompted me to want to make a donation to um, a food bank here locally. And, you know, I chose Mana Food Bank because um, they're, a pretty large local food bank and they're associated with a national organization. Um, and so uh, we will make a donation really on your behalf. So um, I, I have an, an amount in mind, but I really want you guys to, to show me your progress picks. And, you know, the more impressed I am with your progress picks, it'll make me really excited about um, donating. And, you know, I won't say the more I'll donate, but I would, I'll just be really happy about it. And it probably will make me want to honor you and donate more. Um, but, you know, these days and times, there there are a lot of food insecurities because of the pandemic. Um, and it's really kids that are suffering with that the most, being out of school sometimes. And some kids, the only meal they get is in school. 
Um, it's really hard to believe in this day and age, but it is the truth. And so um, I felt like the best thing that we could do to honor the Bristol orphans was to donate to a local food bank. And so that's what we're going to do. And so I wanted you guys to be a part of it. I didn't want to put a dollar amount on, you know, each one you post, we'll do this. Um, you know, but so it's kind of loosey goosey, but I will let you know at the end what we're going to be able to donate. And we're super excited about it. And of course it comes out of the shop. And so, you know, I appreciate you buying supplies from us because that money then will feed back into that donation. So it all kind of works together hand in hand. So I appreciate it. Um, okay. Will you be able to see the live chat comments after the video stops? We'll see. Uh, that's a good question. I mean, the others that I have, I have been able to. Um, you guys weren't able to on the taping they went away but if i can't um i will post something and you guys can send me an email <laughs> i'll do it that way if you're here but you know i've i've seen a lot of names but hopefully hopefully i'll be able to see them we'll we'll see um yeah in honor of those kids nancy yeah you bet that's that's the thing so um we we want to do something to help in this month of love you know not everybody's a big fan of uh valentine's day but it's a good chance to step back and think about your friends and you know other people in your life that you do care about and uh your tribe uh which i like to think we're a tribe and um a good tribe you know people that support each other and that have like interest and um it's a good time to just have an excuse to you know do something for somebody else and to be thoughtful um, about other people, which I know we a lot of times are, um, but it's a nice time to put some of that into action. So, um, yeah. So somebody asked a question about which color I was using and I believe I was using 503. It was either 503 or 504, but I think I had 503. Now that I've mixed my two Hanks up, it'll be fun to figure it out. Yes, it was a, uh, I don't know, 503 or 504. <laughs> I should have wrote it down. I'll figure it out later, but it's one of those two. Those two colors are really close in color, like I will show you. Um, they look close, right? And so the, the lighter one is the 504. The darker one is the 503. I tend to like the 503 a lot, a lot. And that's probably the one that I use just because it's my go-to. But this DMC 115, if you want to use a DMC, is fabulous. You won't regret that at all. And Ruby Slippers is another good one, anything like that. And so I will also, again, I'll just remind you that if you're stitching on linen or Ada, don't, don't worry about the edges. Um, over the weekend, I'll put together some edging stitches for you, and I'll post it on our webpage, and I'll let you know where it's at. Yeah, Nanette, you can post on Sassy Jacks on Facebook. You can post on your Instagram account and tag us. If you're a YouTuber and you want to talk about it there, um, you know, let us know you did that. I think it, I think you can tag us underneath your YouTube video and we'll know. Um, but just, you know, if it's if it's someplace that you're not sure I'll see it, just let me know. I'll be looking for it. And Jennifer, I think if you start next week, you'll have plenty of time. It's not a long, hard stitch and it goes really quick and easy. Um, so and Frederica, it's good to see you from New Zealand. Um, you'll have to send me a note, Frederica, and let me know if we can ship over there yet. I think we're still locked down that we can. And I am trying to get um, my system fixed where people can download it from other countries. I know somebody was having trouble from Australia because we had turned off Australia for shipping. But um, I'm, it, it's a glitch in my system, and I apologize for it. So my guy was working on it today, so hopefully he can fix that. Hey, Claudia, it's good to see you on here. Yep, thank you for that. Um, and again, you know, Claudia has the great, the most definitive Bristol website. So I will put a link to that too. And you guys, if you haven't looked at that, you should. She's got beautiful pictures of Bristol's out there, but she also has tons of information. So um, that's a great place to go check out Bristol's. So that's kind of all I had. And I, I really, you know, it's like eating in front of somebody when they're not eating. I really don't want to stitch in front of you guys until I know that I've sent out all the things that you've ordered from me. Because I just think that would be mean. 
Um, so I don't want to sit and stitch in front of you, but I will uh, do some of that with you next week. So I think that's really all that I had. It's been about 45 minutes of me rambling on. And um, when you're holding up things, you can't see them on Facebook. I'm sorry, Carol. I'll get things posted for you so you can see it. And um, there are uh, pictures, pretty good pictures on our website too. Of it. Hey, Susan, it's good to see you. Um, or good to see your name. <laughs> rather um let's see 814 is another good color david that's a great color and you're using pearl which is great you know flower thread is another option flower thread and sulky sulky which is a pearl number 12 also a great option um you know on the learning stitches thing we used a red on there i forget what the number of it was but also a great option so you know this is one of those things we give you these things free because we you know, we love it if you buy some supplies from us, but, you know, we really want it to be accessible and we want you to be able to stitch from stash. So if you've got stuff in your stash that you love, stitch with it. You know, that's the name of this game. And, um, you know, post it for us. I really enjoy seeing what everybody has picked. It's been a pleasure. Um, oh, Kathy's using Sulky. Good for you. Good, good, good. Um, I'll try to post this, um, Denise is asking me if you can see what you missed. I'm going to try to get it posted. I, like I said, I've, I've done this a different way than what I usually do. And so it's got me a little bit bamboozled. So I apologize. But at least you know that uh, <laughs> I'm a human. <laughs> so, And I did lock out Herschel tonight. So he's not down here. He's He has proven to me that he is a normal cat. And he gets up and lays on the keyboard quite often. <laughs> and that was, that was not going to work tonight. So... Um, we'll let him trot through next week, maybe. But, um, and Gloriana Poinsettia. Oh, I bet that's beautiful, Kay. Ugh, on Vintage Pecan Butter. That sounds fantastic. Um, yes, you're very welcome for the video, and you guys are very welcome for the sampler. Allie put it together for us, and she enjoyed it, and um, I hope she'll stitch it with us. It'll be fun. So, okay, I will let you guys get to it, and I will see you back next week. 1147 Sulky is the right one. That is a good color, Judy. It's not the only one, but that's a good color. 1147 Sulky. Um, I have already added the additional fabrics, Ruthie. So they're, <coughs> excuse me, my throat's getting dry. They're already out there. Okay. All right. Thank you guys. Have a good weekend. I'll see you next week. Bye.